digging grave is not just the usual business of excavating sand from the ground. No, digging grave has its own practices and has a lot of things that happen which you probably are not aware of. I bring you 10 things that happen while digging grave in African cultural environment. So like these things happen or they are applied or they come in form of laws, practices, belief system that apply to digging grave. Of course I had the experience of digging a grave in my village and I dug the grave with a friend who had dug over a hundred graves. So he has experience and the number of things I'm saying now, he has first hand knowledge of them. So let's look at these 10 things that happen while digging grave in the village. The first one is that the grave is always dug by the right side of the house. Now if the person that died is the head of the family or his wife or just a person that was part of the owners of the house, the grave is always positioned by the right side of the house. That is if you're standing in front of the house and you're looking outside by the right side, that's where you always get graves, except in situations where there is no space on the right side or the right side is already occupied by a number of graves you can move to the left. Now in some compounds, you might see a grave that looks like it was buried on the left side. Those in that compound will tell you that the original pattern of the house was that it was supposed to face a particular direction and the right side of that direction is where you saw the grave. It is an honor to the person that owns the house or lives in that house to be buried on the right side of the house. Next, while digging the grave, you don't jump over the grave. No one jumps over the grave. It is just one of the beliefs that it is wrong and it desecrates the grave. So whether they are kids or just one of the diggers and you make the mistake of jumping over the grave, you have to do what? Jump back. And that is the way to address such error. Next, if you are among those who dug the grave, you don't walk out and go to your house just like that. After digging the grave, you must wash your feet. Cultural practice says you don't take the sand from the graveside to your house, especially if you are among those who dug the grave, the sand you excavated from the ground touches your feet. You don't go back to your house with that sand, you wash it off. So there's always a bucket by the side. Those grave diggers, after doing that, they walk to the bucket, wash their feet and then go to their houses. Then this one sounds really weird. While digging the grave, the spirit of the person to be buried in the grave is right there watching you dig the grave. That's the belief. It is believed that the person is standing right there watching as the grave is being dug. Now I was part of those who dug my uncle's grave and as I was digging, as I was going down, getting to six feet, I kept turning. Any small chance I had, I turned and looked back to see what I could have a last glimpse of my uncle standing there watching me as I dug his grave. But hey, I didn't see. Of course, it's because it's a spiritual thing. So that's it. The belief is that the person that is going to be buried in the grave, the spirit of that person is standing right there watching those digging the grave. <laughs> Next is that the grave, of course, is six feet. That's the measurement. But those who are digging it, how do they know that it is six feet? Well, they use the shovel. The shovel is used to do the measurement. Once you dig and the shovel gets swallowed two times, that is, it can stand on itself while standing on top of each other. If the shovel can go down two times, that is one on top of the other, it means it is six feet that is how 
to measure the ground to know you have reached six feet. But those who have dug so many graves don't need any measurement. As they go down, they are somehow aware that they are already at the sixth feet. But hey, just for the sake of measurement, they use the shovel, place it twice, one on top of the other, to be sure it is six feet. Next is, you don't throw sand into the grave while someone is inside digging it out. That is, as you dig the grave and you are flinging the sand out, no one is expected to throw sand back in while you are there. It is against the culture and it is not a good omen. So they might have to appease the gods or do one or two sacrifices to free the person that was inside while the sand was thrown in. So, once someone is inside the grave digging out the sand, you don't throw sand back in. Next, when people who are digging the grave are done, you give them hot drink, what do they use it to do? One of the things is that they move into the grave, put some drops inside to do what is called in Igbo language, etojala which means cleansing the ground, calming the ground, and of course, making the coast clear. So that's a practice associated with digging the grave. You give hot drink to those who have dug the grave, they might drink it after, but they will first go to the grave, put some drops inside, say one or two things in form of prayer, and then make the grave calm for the corpse to come and take a peaceful rest. Next, when you are digging the grave and you find that that particular spot, someone has already been buried there, you don't go ahead to bury the fresh corpse in that same grave. So what do you do? Nothing. You just cover up the grave. But in some cultures, you have to do something. You bring white cock and cola nut and give to the grave diggers as a way of cleansing their spirit because the error was not theirs. So when you give them the white cork, cola nut and some other items, you can now cover up the grave. But you don't go ahead to bury the fresh corpse inside that same grave. You have to cover it up and look for a fresh spot to dig another grave. And for you to find out that someone had previously been buried there, that would be when you're getting to six feet. So you see, all the effort must have been put in before you make this mistake. And what do you do? Once you dig and you find something like wood or clothes, not really the corpse itself because by then it may have decayed. So what you normally find is wood representing the coffin or clothes which was used to cover the dead, once you find that, you raise alarm, you shift out, and then cover up the grave. In every case, people who are digging the grave are given something from the family of the deceased. They are given hot drink, crates of drinks, cola nuts, and of course, food. In the olden days, live chicken used to be one of the items given to the grave diggers. What they do is, after digging the grave, they go and then cook the chicken and share among themselves. But these days, live chicken suddenly became an option and you rarely find it among the items given to grave diggers these days. But once you are given these items, especially cola nut, you don't eat cola nut inside the grave. For instance, you're a grave digger and you're inside digging and you say, hey, give me one garden egg let me eat. You don't do that inside the grave because it means you are desecrating the grave. You have to wait until you come out before you taste anything given to you. This next one is specific to some villages. You don't record people digging the grave. That is, if somebody is inside the grave, digging it, flinging out the sand, you don't record the person except with the person's consent. For instance, as I was digging the grave, 
I gave them my camera and told them to record me. Yes, some persons raised alarm, but they were told I gave the consent and in fact, the camera belonged to me. So, you don't record people digging the grave, especially in my village. It's not as if if you record the person, you're desecrating the grave. No, it's a form of respect to the people that dig the grave. So all these beliefs, cultural practices and laws I've brought to you, they are still practiced in many villages, but in some, they are no longer stringently practiced. But these are the things that happen while digging the grave. So now you know that digging the grave is not just the ordinary process of excavating sand from the ground, but a sacred practice.